Hello there. Today I watched your channel and I saw all the videos you read to the kids. Today can you read one of my favorite books? Actually, Frog, yes. I think I got one of your favorite books. Oh, here we go. Here it is. It's called Home Sweet Home. <laughs> Oh, really, Huda? Can you please read it to me? Of course, Bullfrog, I will. Home Sweet Home by Coloring Picture and illustrated by Jeannie Orr. Under the hedge was a big green bucket with holes in the sides and water in the bottom. In the bucket lived a frog. One sunny day, Frog was keeping nice and cool and damp in his shady bucket. Then suddenly the bucket moved. Frog saw a large hand holding the handle and a big voice boomed. This old thing will have to go. Then so will I, croaked Frog. And off he hopped to find a new home. It was a bad day to look for a new home. The sun was shining and Frog felt hot. He leaped into the rainwater barrel, but it was empty. Oh! He hopped toward a flower pot, but someone already lived there. No frogs allowed in my, in here, squeaked Mouse. You're too damp. Frog hopped under a pile of loose, but someone already lived there too. No frog, no crackers in my house, Grumble Turtle. You'll keep me awake. Frog saw a cool, damp hole under a tree and looked in. A little face with bright eyes, a pink nose, and long whiskers popped up. No room in here, said Rabbit, wiggling her nose. There are already ten of us already. Frog hopped over to the drain pipe. Someone with eight long legs climbed down to look at him. You can't come in here, said Spider. You'll make a mess of my lovely web. Frog hopped away gloomily. Nobody seemed to want him. Perhaps I'll find a home here, he said as he jumped up a step, hopped through a doorway and into a kitchen. Plop! He dived into the washing bowl, but the but he did not like the bubbles. Splash! He hopped into the water jug, but he did not like the ice cubes. Frog gazed into the washing machine. His eyes popped as he watched the water whizz around and around. I don't want to be that clean, said Frog. Frog hopped upstairs and into the bathroom. Ooh, lots of places here, he croaked. He leaped into the basin, but there was no water in it. Then Frog heard running water. He looked around and saw water pouring into an enormous bathtub. In he popped. Ouch! Too hot for me, he croaked. Frog was so tired from all his hopping and searching that he fell fast asleep. But the soon woke up when the bucket began to shake. Oh no, not again. I do, don't want to go anywhere, he croaked. I've only just moved in. Frog slurped from side to side as the bucket swung through the air. Then he, it stopped. He scrambled up to the edge and peeped over. What a very, what very big boots, he grunted. Frog, frog and the water hurtled out of the bucket. It must be a dream. I am a flying frog, he croaked. What? As he flew through the air, down, 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 splash, blurp, ribbit, into some lovely cool water. 
Frog swam to a large lily pad, pulled himself up, and sat there gazing around in the water. I can't believe my luck," he said. "This is the most beautiful home I've ever seen." And that's the end. I hope Frog you loved the story. Yes, Huda, I love the story. Roar, roar! I don't want this curly, frizzy, bumpy, naughty hair. What? You don't want your frizzy, bumpy, naughty, and curly hair? But I wish I had hair like you. Roo roo! No, I want hair like you. Having curly and naughty hair is not the way. What? You don't want your curly hair, but I want hair just like you too. Roo roo! I don't want my curly hair. It's so be so curly. It's always naughty and unfair. What? You don't like your curly curly hair, Lion? But I love curly hair. Guys, guys, what's wrong? Who the? I don't want curly hair. I'm so upset. Who the? I don't want straight hair. I'm so upset. Guys, I will read you a good story, and in the end, you will learn a good lesson that you have to be yourself, and you are the best. I like myself. Written by Karen Beaumont and illustrated by David Cartro. And illustrated by David Cartro. I like myself. I like myself. I'm glad I'm me. There's no one else I'd rather be. I like my eyes, my ears, my nose. I like my fingers and my toes. I like me wild. I like me tame. I like me different and the same. I like me fast. I like me slow. I like me where, where I everywhere I go. I like me in the inside too. For all I think and say and do. Inside, outside, up, upside down, from head to toe and all around. I like it all. It's. It all is me, and me is all I want to be. And I don't care in any way what someone else may think or say. I may be called a silly nut or crazy cuckoo bird, so what? I'm having fun. I'm having too much fun, you see. For anything to bother me, even when I look a mess, I still, I still don't like me any less. Cause nothing in the this world, you know, can change what's deep inside, and so, and so, no matter if they stop and stare, no person ever. Anywhere can make me feel what what they see is all they there really is to me. Can make me feel that what they see is all there really is to me. I'd still like me with fleas or warts or with a silly snout that's not. Or knobby knees, or hippy hips, or poke, or purple polka dot lips. 
or beaver breed or stinky toes or horns pounding from my nose. Or oh, yikes with spikes or down my spine or or hair that's like a or hair that's like a por porcupine. I still would be the same, you see. I like myself because of me. I like myself because I'm me. Guys, do you see how this girl loves herself no matter what happens or what anybody says? I think you guys should love yourself no matter if you got a long neck or scary face or long, long fur. We should always love ourselves because what we have is very good for us. One, two, three, come on! Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I could read you The Gingerbread Man, written by Eric Seven and illustrated by Joy Buddy. An old woman and her husband lived together in their farm. One day the old woman said, I will make a gingerbread man for my husband's supper. She mixed the gingerbread in a bowl. Then she rolled it out and shaped it like a little man. She gave him raisin eyes, a cherry mouth, and nuts for buttons. At last, the gingerbread man was ready for the oven. After a time, the old woman looked into the oven to see if her baking was done. She had no sooner opened the oven than, than the gingerbread man hopped up leaped to the ground and ran straight for the open door. Stop! Stop! cried the old woman. The gingerbread man sped into the wedgie table patch. The old woman close behind him. The husband was tending vegetables. Stop! Stop! he cried when he saw the gingerbread man but the gingerbread man called, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man started down the road. The old woman and her husband closed behind him. Soon the gingerbread man passed an old hound dozing in the sun. Stop, stop, the hound barked. But the gingerbread man only laughed. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man took off, a, took off across a grassy meadow. The old woman, her husband, and the hound cross close behind him. Soon the gingerbread man passed a Cow munching, crunching clover. Stop, stop, the cow moaned. Run, run, as fast as you can. You can't catch me. I'm the gingerbread man. The gingerbread man came to the town. To the town. The old woman, her husband, the hound, and the cow close behind him. It was market day and the streets were crowded with people. Look at the gingerbread man, cried a child. Stop, stop, cried the town people. Run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch me, I'm the gingerbread man. Now the old woman, her husband, the hound, the cow, and all the town's people were close behind the gingerbread man. At last, the gingerbread man came to a stream. On the bank sat a fox, an old woman, her husband, a hound, a cow, and all the town's people are close behind him. The gingerbread man painting. 
too bad, said Fox. I must get across the stream, said the gingerbread man. I can help you, said Fox. Hop onto my back. The gingerbread man hopped up and the fox jumped into the water. After swimming short way, the fox said, The water is getting deeper. Hop onto my neck. The gingerbread man did as the fox suggested. After swimming a little further, the fox said, The water is up on to my neck, hop onto the top of my head. He, the gingerbread man did as the fox suggested. Just then, the fox gave his head a toss and opened his mouth wide. The gingerbread man flipped into the air and landed smack between the fox's jaws. Crunch, munch! The gingerbread was gone. The fox turtled home, waving his bungee tail off the old woman, her husband, the hound, the cow, and the town people. Only the fox was clearer enough to get that silly gingerbread man for supper. Guys, I hope you like my story. And I think the moral of the story is that... I think the moral of the story is you have to be clever and cheeky sometimes. You need to not believe on strangers. They can get you in big trouble. Cat Blue Cat Written and illustrated by Jeannie Desmond. Blue cat and red cat try really hard to be different sort of cat. The real change happens when they become friends. Red cat and blue cat lived in the same house. Blue cat stayed upstairs. Red cat stayed downstairs. Whenever they saw each other, hiss! Yow! Scratch! It was not good, not good at all. But neither can you about the other secrets wish. Red Cat wished he were as smart as Blue Cat and... Blue Cat wanted to be fast and bouncy like Red Cat. So they fought and they hissed and they wished all day long. One day, Blue Cat had a good idea. If I turn myself red, I'll become fast and bouncy, he said. So he ate a crab, some cherries, a watermelon, strawberries and rose petals. Guess who was spying on him the whole time? I will show Blue Cat who's smart said Red Cat. He ate blueberries, blue bells, a blue fish, blue pudding, and certain cupcakes. It, it did not work, not at all. Blue Cat stayed blue and Red Cat stayed red and both cats were a bit sad and a bit angry. I will try something different, declared Blue Cat. Look at me, I'm Red, he said. Red Cat came up with his own plan. If I roll in this blue paint, I'll become a blue cat, he said. Splatter! Red Cat went to show Blue Cat his brand new self. I'm Blue too, said Red Cat. I'm a Red Cat, said Blue Cat. Grrr! Stumble! Tumble! Womp! It had no works, not at all. 
Are you trying to be like me? Us blue cats? Maybe, said Red Cat, but I'm still too sticky and I'm too hot, Blue Cat admits. Tug! Both cats helped each other become unred and not blue. Red Cat helped Blue Cat take off his red clothes. Pull! Blue Cat washed Red Cat's hard to clean paint spots. Rubber scrub, but they were not done yet. Not even close. Here's what you need to be exactly like me, said Blue Cat. He showed Red Cat how to come up with smart ideas. Don't you want to be like me? asked Red Cat. Well, um, maybe, said Blue Cat, but just a little bit. Boing, follow me, said Red Cat. Red Cat showed Blue Cat how to run fast and jump high. Each worked hard, very hard, to be exactly like each other. But something was not quite right. I think I, I think I like to be Red Cat best. Red Cat admit, I can't run as fast as you, said Blue Cat. But I am the best Blue Cat ever. They were still Blue Cat and Red Cat, but something had changed. Red Cat and Blue Cat were friends. They did all sorts of fast, bouncy, and clever things together. Then one day, they spot a yellow cat. Can you sing, us Red Cat? Um, should we be like yellow, us Blue Cat? Here we go again. Hello. The ends. Not yet by Robert Rosen. Before we start, there are some words to know before you read. Goggles, life jackets, pool, run, stretch, swim, swim cap. Tina is at the pool. She wants to swim. Can I swim now? Not yet, not yet. Stretch before you swim. Can I swim now? Not yet, not yet. You need to wear your life jacket. Can I swim now? Not yet, not yet. Put on your swim cap. Can I swim now? Not yet, not yet. Wear your goggles. Can I swim now? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Tina runs to the pool. T time to swim. Don't run near the pool. It's not safe. Stop, 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 stop. Time to swim. Don't swim alone. Always swim with a friend. Stop, 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 stop. Time to swim. Splash! Time to go home. Not yet, not yet. Greedy Cat and the Goldfish by Joy Coley and Robin Belt. When Grandma went on holiday, her little goldfish came to stay. Katie said, I'll goldfish sit. I know how to look after it. Mom said, Katie, whatever you do, just watch out for Mr. You-Know-Who. Katie. 
Katie smiled at Greedy Cat, who was lying down on the kitchen mat. Greedy Cat is kind and sweet. He knows it's not a fish to eat. But Greedy Cat was thinking, "Yummy yum! A goldfish, a delicious little goldfish, served up in a bowl. Fish, a snack for Greedy Cat." A bit of a climb, a bit of a hop, and that cat was on the table top. Near the bowl, he began to purr and dribble down his orange fur. Look, said Katie, he wants to send a message to his goldfish friend. But Greedy Cat was thinking he could flick it with his paw, catch it in a fish hook claw, and lift it dripping to his jaw. A snack for Greedy Cat. As he leaned across the bowl, it shook and began to roll. A wave of water gurgled out. Katie jumped up with a shout. He tried to give the fish a pet. Get off the table, greedy cat! He jumped and landed on the floor and ran stomp stomp out of the door. Yow! He'd lost his goldfish snack, but he would wait and he'll be back. Mum said, "I don't trust that cat. He's far too greedy and far too fat. I know he's going to help himself. Let's put the goldfish on the shelf." Later, that cat came through the door and sneaked across the kitchen floor. The table was empty, no little fish, no nice snack, and a round glass dish. Yow! From the corner of his hungry eyes, he saw his, the fishbowl way up high. This wasn't right. This wasn't fair. He'd never be able to jump a bear. Then he saw a. Then he saw curtains by the shelf, and he purred a deep purr to himself. He couldn't jump, but he could climb. Look out, goldfish! Supper time. Greedy cat was thinking that little fish was round and sweet, a golden fish bowl full of meat. Soon it would be a yummy treat, a snack for greedy cats. Up he climbed with a tooth and a claw, up the curtains paw by paw. Up he didn't stop, up 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 until he was at the nearly top. But then the curtain gave a rip, and greedy cat began to slip. Greedy cat was going to fall with the curtain off the wall. Down he slipped, and down some more. The curtain ripped. The curtain tore. He yelled out loud, but could not stop. Down he went. Down, down, plop. Katie ran in. Oh goodness, no! Mum looked and said, "I told you so." From this day on, that greedy cat can stay outside, and that is that. Dear cat, I'm sorry," Katie said. "You have to sleep in the garden shed, not for long. A couple of days until Grandma's back from her holidays." But look," said Katie. "Here's a tree, fish that a cat is allowed to eat." Then she put a, in his food dish some delicious sardine fish. Greedy cat was thinking wrong color, wrong kind, but he didn't really mind. 
in the slot he would find a snack for greedy cats. Now, said Katie, stay out of trouble. Purr, 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 gobble, gobble, gobble. I hope you guys love this story. And I think the moral of the story is to me, when someone gives you something to look after for a couple of days, you actually really need to look after it. Please give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.